Now, aren't I behaving like a bloody idiot? Fancy pointing a shotgun at you. That was my first mistake. I made two other mistakes also. I didn't check to see if the gun was loaded, and I didn't check the safety catch. Now, when you go out in the great Australian bush without all this drama, the same three rules apply. Number one, don't behave like a bloody idiot as I just did. Number two, plan your trip. And number three, check your gear. Here we have four walkers planning a trip into the bush. First off, they're familiarising themselves with the sort of terrain they will encounter by studying a reliable contour map of the area and by taking advice from someone that knows that area. You can never be too careful when you're dealing with the bush. You mustn't take the bush for granted. Otherwise, you can get into real serious trouble. Last year, the vast majority of those who got lost and had to be rescued were shooters. This may seem surprising, because shooters are supposed to be bushmen and most reckon they know the bush like the back of their hand but they still shouldn't shoot alone school groups are often too big and suffer from a lack of experienced leaders when they go bush and most of those who do suffer tragedy are school groups who really just didn't know but you know their teachers should have known that when they go bush they should have one experienced leader, at least, for each group of five students. Now you all probably know the old scout's motto, be prepared. Well, this rule is essential for survival in the bush. You know, whether you're wandering around the Australian bush or even down the Antarctic, four people is the minimum number for safe travel. If someone gets sick, one can stay and the other two can get help. So you see with four, there's really no problem. You know, when you go camping, it's not really necessary to take the kitchen sink. But you must be sure to take the essentials, and that way you won't overload yourself. A few well-chosen items, and a fair amount of common sense on your part, and you'll be right. So what do you take? Well, first and most important, plenty of the right kind of tucker. Of course, a stove and cooking utensils. Check that you have access to good water, or you'll have to carry it with you. A change of clothing to always keep you dry. Several pairs of good stocks a sleeping mat, a reliable sleeping bag, a space blanket, a ground sheet, a good rucksack, and of course, a serviceable tent. Of course, there are bags and bags, and tents and tents. But whatever gear you choose, make sure it's well suited for its intended use. It could make all the difference. Now, I've shown you the essentials, but what about the basic necessities? Survival gear is absolutely essential if anything goes wrong. In fact, it could save your life. Now, I suggest you make up your own kit 
and make sure it includes the items I've got here. Like this compass, for instance, and you must know how to use it. A supply of matches in a waterproof container, a packet of fire lighters that will burn in any weather, a whistle for attracting attention, a small notebook and pencil, a knife, a handy and reliable first aid kit, and check that it's got a tourniquet in it, a torch, and make sure you check the batteries regularly. And this, it's a very simple and easy obtainable pamphlet. It's published by the local authorities in each state to make your venturing into the bush as worry-free as possible. It contains general hints on living in the bush, what to do in an emergency, and it sets out the various methods to attract attention from searchers and from an aircraft when you're in difficulty. Now look at these objects closely. They're small and easy to overlook. But can't you see how any one of these could be instrumental in safeguarding your life? And finally, you know, there's the weather. It'll always be your main concern. So don't forget the wet weather gear, for even a heat wave doesn't rule out the possibility that there's a snowstorm just around the corner. So don't leave the warm clothes behind. You see, a walker and his pack are an ideal unit that can deal with anything. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Yet so many people go off unprepared. Never go anywhere without leaving details of your trip with your family or your friends. And if you are venturing into a remote area, it's a good idea to venture into the remotest part of your own hometown, your local police station. In every state of Australia, the Police Search and Rescue Unit provides an efficient way of getting you out of trouble almost as soon as you get into it. These blokes are completing a trip registration form. Now, it's not necessary in every state to do this, but it can be worthwhile, because if they aren't back by the day they've stated, a search will be organised for them. So it's all go for our walkers. Once on the track, they pace themselves at a rate they can keep up all day, and which won't stretch anyone beyond his capabilities. And above all, they are sticking together. No one is going to get separated or lost. Each walker is keeping an eye on the terrain so that if they do become separated, they will know exactly where they are. And they're enjoying regular rest periods. No one in their party will suffer from exposure or exhaustion. Meanwhile, the shooter, intent on stalking his prey, has neglected to keep an eye on where he is going. He has also lost track of time. So here is one shooter who may be spending a cold, hungry night in the open. And not only will you have a cold night, but what about those poor unfortunates who'll have to search for him in the early hours of the morning? A lost shooter is a menace to others as well as to himself. So my advice to everybody is stick together. So what do you do if you get lost? Stay still and think. Be calm. He who panics is lost. Then when you are calm, look around for familiar landmarks. Make sure you mark a trail, so you don't get more lost than you are already. If that doesn't work, stay put. Try to conserve as much energy as possible. Ration your food and keep warm. You'll be on your own now and need all the common sense you may, or 
You may not have. Meanwhile, our walkers have completed a busy day, and now their planning will ensure they spend a comfortable, relaxing night. It is in this sort of a situation that survival is reduced to its essentials, warmth, food and shelter. Their tent goes up where the ground is high, providing a good runoff for rainwater. Beware of the hollow. Erecting your tent in a hollow might mean you end up sleeping in a well. Now, no matter how wet they get outside, their safe retreat will be waiting for them high and dry. On a really cold night, a fire may be necessary, and the fire tonight will test all their skill. Now you'll note they've cleared at least three metres from around their fire. And their creeping out is the greatest preserver of them all. A welcome sight, isn't it? These walkers have food, warmth and shelter, and you can bet that they will thoroughly extinguish their fire before they leave. Their bushcraft is first rate because of their attentions to planning and checking of their gear. But the shooter is in an even worse position. He's beginning to suffer from exposure exhaustion. He is fast losing his body heat and this could eventually lead him to unconsciousness and death. What he needs is lots of heat fast. This fire will probably keep him alive tonight, but his position is dicey. If it's a cold day tomorrow, he could easily die of exposure. If you suspect that someone on your party is suffering from exposure exhaustion, you must work fast. The best method is put him in a sleeping bag with someone else. Another body is the quickest available source of life-saving warmth. And remember, you must be prepared for whatever the bush throws at you. And so begins another day in the continuing saga of the bush. And today in the continuing saga, believe it or not, it's going to be warmer, which is just as well. Our bushwalkers will be home by evening. They are making sure that they deregister at a police station. That way everyone will know they are safe. They're the sort of people who learn from their experience and gain self-reliance in the process. Now as for our shooter, mate, the sunlight has saved him. And he's recognised a familiar landmark. Now that he has his bearings, he will be home by nightfall too. He'll probably meet some of his fellow shooters on the way, and he'll certainly have some explaining to do. As for our Sunday strollers, well, they don't know where the hell they are. And no one else knows where they are either. They didn't leave any details with friends. But fortunately, the next door neighbour has reported them missing and police have tracked down their car. A rescue team is on its way in and should get to them by nightfall. Now that's acting like an idiot, isn't it? But there's no need for you to act like that when you go bush. Because the bush is our greatest natural heritage. It belongs to you, to me, to our children, and even our children's children. And it's there for us all to love and enjoy. So let's take care of it 
and most important, let's take care of ourselves whenever we go bush. See ya. <laughs>